Hello, my name is Nick Sadeghi, and today I'm going to be speaking about Natalol. Natalol can also go by its brand name, Corgard. It belongs to a family of drugs known as beta blockers. It's commonly used to treat hypertension as well as chronic angina pectoris. It works at a basic level by decreasing the heart rate and blood pressure. Natalol is approved by the FDA for uses in chronic angina pectoris as well as hypertension and for off-label uses in cardiac dysrhythmias, migraine prophylaxis, as well as tremors, and some other uses. For basic administration directions, patients are going to want to take this medication by mouth, with or without food. Listed are some side effects that patients might run into while taking Natalol. Some common side effects related to cardiovascular systems involve bradyarrhythmias, which is the, the overall goal of this medication is to slow down the heart rate to reduce blood pressure. So that makes sense for that to be a side effect, as well as neuro neurologic side effects like dizziness or fatigue. Some serious side effects that the patients need to be aware of, that if they do experience anything like these or symptoms resembling these, they need to contact their primary care right away or call 911 if serious. These symptoms could be related to atrioventricular block, severe cardiac dysrhythmias, as well as heart failure. Mechanism of action. Natalol is a non-selective beta adrenoreceptor blocking agent without intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. It competitively blocks a response of beta-1 and beta-2 adrenergic stimulation, resulting in a block of sympathetic stimulation, a reduction in heart rate, blood pressure, as well as heart contractility. Inhibition of beta-2 receptors mainly located in bronchial smooth muscle of the airways, can lead to airway constriction like seen in asthma. Natalol can be offered in generic form and brand form under the name Corgart. Both come in oral tablet formulations in 20 milligram, 40 milligram, and 80 milligram concentrations. Here are our specific oral dosage recommendations. For chronic angina pectoris, Initially, patients can be started at 40 milligrams by mouth once daily, and this dose can be increased in 40 to 80 milligram increments at three to seven day intervals. The usual maintenance dose for patients with chronic angina pectoris ranges from 40 to 80 milligrams once daily, with a max daily dose set at 240 milligrams. For hypertension, initially patients are started also at 40 milligrams by mouth once daily, and this may be increased in 40 to 80 milligram increments up to 320 milligrams once daily. The usual maintenance dose is 40 to 80 milligrams once daily. Dosage adjustments. Natalol does need to be adjusted renally. For creatinine clearances ranging from 31 to 50 mils per min, increase dosing interval to every 24 to 36 hours. If creatinine clearance ranges from 10 to 30 mils per min, increase dosing interval to every 24 to 48 hours. If creatinine clearance is less than 10 mils per min, increase the dosing interval to every 40 to 60 hours. And for hepatic impairment, no hepatic dosing adjustments are required. Warnings and precautions. First, we have anaphylactic reactions. If patients have a history of anaphylaxis with use of beta blockers or natalol or any component in, involved with natalol, use is not recommended. Next, we have bronchospastic disease. So patients that do have a history of bronchospastic, bronchospastic disease, being that this is a non-selective beta blocker, we're gonna go, wanna go ahead and monitor closely. Conduction abnormality, diabetes, as this medication may potentiate hypoglycemia or mass signs of hypoglycemia, history of heart failure, myasthenia gravis, peripheral vascular disease, pheochromocytoma, thyroid disease, like in diabetes, this medication may mask signs of hyperthyroidism, and then abrupt discontinuation. This medication should not be stopped abruptly. We have to instruct our patients to taper off this medication slowly to avoid withdrawal symptoms. Contraindications. Being that Natalol works as a non-selective beta blocker, it does have activity on beta-2 receptors. So for this reason, Natalol use is contraindicated in patients with bronchial asthma. Also, 
it does still work on beta one receptors. So it does have uh, the goal effect of it is slowing down the heart. So this medication is contraindicated in patients with sinus bradycardia, heart block greater than first degree, cardiogenic shock, uncompensated cardiac failure, as well as any allergic reaction to beta blockers or natalol or any of its components. Monitoring. So for monitoring, we're gonna to wanna to monitor for heart rate, blood pressure, as well as signs and symptoms of efficacy and toxicity of this medication. For angina, for efficacy, we wanna look at reduction in anginal pain. And for hypertension, for efficacy, we wanna look at lowering of blood pressure. And toxicity for symptoms of hypotension. Here are my references. Thank you very much.